of RLT Strategies. He is author of Party Crasher, A Gay Republican Challenges Politics as Usual. Rich Stoffel, good to have you on our program. Nice to be here. Uh, what's your take on uh, the Obama approach, the difference between the promises and uh, the realities? Uh, do you have any grievance against the president on that issue? Well, my only grievance with the president is that I actually think he's more pro-gay than he says he is. I think he actually uh, represents a new generational shift, and I think he, for example, personally, he gets gay marriage. And I think he's actually being dishonest when he says he doesn't to the public. Uh, I don't fault him as much as I think the gay movement has enabled his bad behavior and continues to do so. You've talked about Rahm Emanuel, but I also look at Congressman Frank, who told him, don't come out in favor of gay marriage, don't push this now, don't push that now, because ultimately those political power figures are interested in power. And we in the gay community who are fighting for gay rights have to be about our mission and advocate for equal rights for all people. And as uh, gays are continually thrown out of the military, we don't have equal rights in this country, it's fine to to throw a party to celebrate with a bunch of millionaires and, and wealthy donors at the White House, and that accomplishes nothing, really. I think that we as a community have to demand equality, and politicians, I think, respond to pressure. And I think when I hear uh, from Richard Zaccaridi, who I have a lot of respect for, that he thinks he's given the president some breathing room, I think that, that worries me because I think we should be very aggressive in uh, pushing for our equality and not be uh, sidetracked by a, a party at the White House. Well, we go back to Richard Zuccaritis again, an attorney, former senior advisor on gay rights to President Clinton. Uh, what's your response to that? Well, I, I would agree with Rich Staffel that uh, I think that you know these are, when you when you're president of the United States, you can have people and you can have people in. I mean, I worked at the White House, so I know how this works. I mean, you 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 send some powerful messages from that from that arena, but. But Rich, Ta- Rich Tappel is exactly right. Uh, the, the biggest mistake the gay movement could make right now is to, uh, is to, is to stop putting pressure on him because we've seen in the last six months that, uh, as, as we saw in other civil rights movements, that people in power, governments in power, respond best to pressure. Back to you, the founder of the Log Cabin the Republicans. Uh, uh, does that reassure you about uh, Richard Socorridis and the, uh, the movement in general? You said the gay movement was what was making it difficult uh, for the president. Well, Richard's been somewhat unique among uh, prominent gay Democrats in speaking out and writing an op-ed uh, challenging the president, and I, I really respect him a lot for doing that. But for the most part, the gay organizations and um, our openly gay uh, congressional figures have been more explaining to us why things can't move fast enough, why we should be patient, why we should, we should slow down. And it reminds me of the early Clinton years when two of the most anti-gay uh, policies, uh, DOMA and Don't Ask, Don't Tell, the Defense of Marriage Act and the military ban, were both implemented by a Democratic president. And that is very frightening that the road to uh, hell is paved with good intentions, and that's what concerns me right now is I hear all these people saying, wait, be patient, hold on. Um, those are pretty scary things, I think. We have to be very aggressive. This, this president responds to pressure, and when the gay movement has the courage to really stand up to him, uh, we'll get what we want, and if we wait, we won't. Now, Richard Socorridis, you were there during the Clinton administration. Uh, uh, what happened that led to Don't Ask, Don't Tell uh, and to the Defense of Marriage Act, which was signed by President uh, Clinton? Well, two very unfortunate episodes, and I'll, uh, I'm, uh, I've, you know, over time talked to President Clinton about them, and I think he would probably describe both of them as unfortunate also. Uh, Rich Toffel, back to you with the Log Cabin Republicans. Uh, today, uh, the, the Guardsman, National Guardsman uh, Dan Choi, lieutenant in the National Guard, uh, is being tried by a military court in Syracuse, New York, because he came out uh, as a gay uh, a soldier. Uh, just interested in, in your take on, uh, on the, the political uh, situation now and, and what the impact of that case might be. Well, I think he's emerging as one of my heroes and one of the heroes of the gay movement at this time. He's really a fantastic speaker here. He's a linguist who could be interpreting messages from terrorists to protect the nation, and he's being thrown out because he's gay. It, it really puts a point on how ridiculous this is, and it's happened under the Obama administration. And the difference between the Dan Choi who'll be tried in, in, the, in the military courts and this crowd at the White House, who are all donors there, insulated from a lot of the discrimination and the people who are facing the discrimination, whether they're in the military or they're working in uh, positions where they can be discriminated because they can't choose where they work, they're not you know, wealthy people. Those are the people that have been, we've been sort of forgotten. And I think that's what we have to fight for, is for the, the people who don't have a voice in this game. And it's, and it's not the 
the wealthy uh, donor crowd. Professor Wolf, uh, back to you, law, uh, law professor at University of Pennsylvania, the president's uh, campaign advisor on uh, gay rights, uh, attended the White House party uh, yesterday. Uh, what do you say to that and, and to the president uh, uh, allowing Dan Choi to be tried uh, despite uh, his promise that he would uh, do what he could to, uh, and he could, as president, order uh, the Army not to enforce, don't ask or don't tell? Yeah, I'll tell you, I, I am frankly astonished to hear a pair of uh, loyalist Republicans attempting to gain some kind of political advantage through a discussion of these issues. Uh, the official party platform of the Republican Party and the official position of their nominee this past election cycle was a full and full-throated endorsement of the Don't Ask, Don't Tell policy of the main maintenance of the Defense of Marriage Act and indeed amending our Constitution to write inequality into our founding document. Uh, the notion that there is some kind of uh, concern about the road to tell being paved with good intentions around the Obama administration uh, is one that I find not particularly credible. Okay, I'll, I'll get them to respond to that. But in the meantime, uh, what about what's happening now with Dan Choi? Well, look, I think that the discharge of Dan Choi under this policy and the discharge of every gay and lesbian and bisexual service member under this policy is outrageous. And I think that you only have to look at the president's own statements, both in the campaign and, and since, to uh, see that he agrees. Now, the question well, is – Well, if he agrees, why hasn't you know, he done anything about this case? It's a, it's a perfectly good question. And I think the answer is that, number one, uh, there is a need for a legislative solution here, and I think nobody disagrees about that. And by the way, some of the leading advocates, like uh, SLDN, Service Members Legal Defense Network, are actually opposed to uh, the kinds of executive options that uh, ha have been put on the table. Um, I don't know if I agree with SLDN on that point, but the, the White House itself is getting some complicated mixed messages from the advocates. Um, but more broadly, look, uh, you know, this president has inherited a really bad and ugly set of anti-gay statutes, and uh, he's made it clear that getting rid of those statutes is a high priority. Rich Topol, I'll let you respond to uh, first to uh, what uh, Professor Wolf uh, said, how can you be a Republican and, uh, and uh, I think he's saying and, and think that you're pr pr uh, uh, pushing the uh, gay, lesbian, uh, uh, bisexual, transgender agenda uh, when your party fully endorses both the Defense of Marriage Act and Don't Ask, Don't Tell? Well, as he, he, sh he knows that I, in, in, in my work in the uh, Log Cabin Republicans, I was completely outspoken. I never got invited to any White House dinners or any parties at the White House because I was in the doghouse with the first Bush, with Dole, and uh, with GW. I mean, I was not an insider. I was an advocate, and that's the point I'm trying to make. I oppose those policies, and I wouldn't go. Now, just last week, the, uh, this Department of Justice wrote a brief that mimics the most right-wing anti-gay rhetoric you can imagine and defending DOMA. This administration wrote it. And here again, now, this isn't really Republican versus Democrat, because let's face it, the Republicans are largely irrelevant now. This is the Democrats in control of the House. This is the Democrats in control of the Senate. And this is a president who said he would be a fierce champion for us. So that's the measurement now to hear an advocate, uh, the man who is advising the president, say, He's not sure what position and doesn't know why this is happening and says he's, the president's getting mixed message on this. This is very frightening. We, we need to speak with one strong voice and say that Dan Choi should not be thrown out of the military. It's that simple. Uh, Tobias Wolf, quickly, uh, what, you didn't uh, address the question of uh, uh, the, the second question that uh, Rich Topol uh, brought up uh, on the defense of marriage. Uh, you mean the brief that was filed in the DOJ? Yeah, right, exactly. Uh, I, I've been critical of that brief, and let me p be clear exactly why. Uh, first of all, in, in this particular case, th there wasn't a need for the DOJ to address the merits of the issues, and I don't think they should have. There were a lot of reasons in this case that, uh, jurisdictional and otherwise, that, that uh, the case could have been disposed of. Uh, and number two, I mean, with all respect, Rich's characterization of the brief I is not accurate. Uh, there were some indefensible, I think, and insupportable arguments in that brief. But in fact, the brief took out a lot of the very ugly language that the Bush administration had used and put in a lot of very important language about uh, recognizing that gay and lesbian couples are getting married in states around the country. Uh, the DOJ was presented with uh, a decision about whether to defend a, an existing statute. Um, I might have made a different de decision. I think the decision that they made is one that can be subjected to some criticism.